Would you believe one of the simplest tools in data science can have a transformative impact in one of the hardest fields in science? Today, I'll show you how. Hi everyone and welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome to DigiLab. My name is Sid Cowley, I am a doctor in plasma physics for nuclear fusion, and in this course we're exploring the intersection of two incredibly interesting fields, nuclear fusion and machine learning. In the first episode, I introduced fusion as a potentially revolutionary energy source and outlined the central challenge behind it. In this episode, I wanted to give you an idea of just how pervasive data science and machine learning techniques are in fusion, and I wanted to start somewhere very fundamental, and that's the all-important confinement I talked about in the introductory episode. But just to recap, fusion represents harnessing the power of the stars here on Earth, and a well-confined fusion plasma means a plasma that doesn't touch the surrounding material. That means it can reach really high densities and temperatures without quickly losing heat to its surroundings. The more well-confined a fusion plasma is, the closer we can get to economic fusion power plants. Now, the most common way to measure good confinement in a fusion machine is with something called the energy confinement time, which tells you how quickly the thermal energy of the plasma would be lost without further heating. A really good high confinement time for magnetic fusion might be around 10 seconds. A low confinement time for magnetic fusion might be around a millisecond. Now it turns out for tokamaks, there are a number of different ways that we can boost the confinement of our machines. For example, we could make our magnetic field stronger. Since tokamaks confine plasmas using magnetic fields, if we make our magnetic field stronger, the plasma should leak out less. Now, what's more, when we design future machines, what we really want to do is take a feature like magnetic field or size of the machine, and with those design features, actually predict what confinement time we would get. If we know this relationship between design features and performance, well, we can build better devices. Now, if you haven't already guessed, this is a fantastic problem for data science and machine learning. In fact, there's some great data freely available online that can be used to solve this exact problem. Now, the data in question consists of a bunch of confinement times measured in real tokamaks around the world. This could be the tokamak ASDEX upgrade in Germany or the joint European Taurus in the UK or the D3D tokamak in America. And for every experiment with a measured confinement time, the data also has a bunch of parameters that the experiment was run with. Things like magnetic field, size of the plasma, and so on and so on. So if we want, we can start to interrogate this data to see if there's any relationship between design features and performance, i.e. confinement times. Now for this demo, we're going to be looking at data from JET, or the Joint European Taurus, a tokamak located in Oxfordshire in the UK. The tokamak recently completed 40 years of operation and during its lifetime was the most powerful machine actively using deuterium and tritium fusion fuel. So we can load this data into a Python notebook and plot, for example, confinement time against some important parameter in these jet experiments. Let's say toroidal magnetic field strength. When we look at this data, I just want to remind everyone that it's real. Each data point here corresponds to a real experiment run at one of the most advanced scientific facilities in the world. But I digress. So if we plot the confinement time against the magnetic field of the machine, we see that there's kind of some relationship here. As we increase our magnetic field strength, as expected, the confinement time increases slightly. But the relationship isn't really clear. Why is that? Well, remember, that in these experiments, loads of different parameters will be changing. And here, we've just plot confinement time measured against one parameter, magnetic field strength. In reality, there are loads of different other parameters that are changing in these experiments and affecting the results. In fact, there's more than eight big, really important parameters that have been shown to strongly affect confinement times in machines. And today, we're gonna deal with just five of them. We have a few magnetic parameters that affect the magnetic confinement and shape, including the toroidal magnetic field strength, the plasma current, and the elongation. But we also have parameters related to the input of heat and fuel, which are the electron density and the thermal power. 
So we've got about five input dimensions here that we're dealing with that all affect the output confinement time of tokamaks. But with so many dimensions, how do we as humans find out what relationship there is between these input parameters and the output performance? I can barely wrap my head around how three-dimensional data looks like, never mind five or six. When data exists in this high-dimensional parameter space, this is when we start to need data science. This is where we can use machine learning. So let's get right into it. And we're going to start by using a simple linear regression, which is a form of machine learning where we essentially fit a straight line to data by trialing out loads of straight lines and seeing what straight line best fits the data. Some data scientists in the audience may laugh at the idea of a linear regression being this complex machine learning. And indeed, we are going to get a little more complex later. But let's start off with a simple linear regression. So here we're using a multi regression, which means instead of just X and Y, we're fitting a hyperplane to those five dimensional input parameters and that one output parameter. It's important to note that here we're fitting everything in log space, and that's because the underlying relationships are multiplicative, which means if I double my magnetic field strength, for example, and keep everything else constant, what happens is the confinement time gets multiplied by a certain amount. But if we take the log of this, we get a linear relationship between the input and output parameters. So let's go ahead and run this linear regression on these thousands of data points spread across these five input dimensions in our Python notebook. We're just going to fit the model to a section of the data and we'll keep the rest for testing when the model has been trained. So after we fit this linear regression, the computer will output a coefficient for each input variable that tells you essentially how important it is, how the confinement time scales with that input variable. We'll have one for how the confinement time scales with magnetic field, one for how the confinement time scales with plasma current, and so on and so on. These coefficients represent the scaling and the importance of our input features to how our tokamak actually performs. So for that test data that we were saving from earlier, let's use our linear regression model to predict the performance of these experiments given the experimental inputs. And this figure here shows just that. So on the y-axis, we have the experimentally measured confinement times for that test data on the jet tokamak. And on the x-axis, we have what our linear regression model thinks it should be given the experimental inputs. In this figure, perfect agreement would be a diagonal line going straight through the plot, as you can see there. And from this figure, we can see that actually the predictions are pretty good. When the model predicts high confinement times, high confinement times are measured and vice versa. So here we've done something quite powerful. We saw when we just plotted the data in one dimension, it didn't really make sense. And because the data was high dimensional, we as humans had trouble figuring out what the relationship was between tokamak design parameters and how well they perform. But we see a linear regression model has done it for us. It's figured out what the relationships are. Now, I should stress that the regression models, just like the ones we've built, essentially these scaling laws, they have been used actively in the field of fusion for decades and are currently being used to influence the design of future power plants and reactors. And in the field of fusion, historically, we've liked to use these scaling laws because they give us good intuition. They're transparent. We can look at the coefficients and look at how important each parameter is to determine fusion performance. But if we want, we can get a lot fancier than a simple linear regression model. For example, we could train a Gaussian process on this data. Now, just to remind everyone, a Gaussian process tries to understand the fundamental patterns of data by essentially sampling loads of different potential functions that could fit the data. If you want to know more about Gaussian processes in detail, I recommend you check out our other videos. But for now, let's press on and use DigiLab's machine learning platform, TwinLab, to train a Gaussian process emulator on this JET data. Again, we're only training it on a section of the data and using the rest for testing. What we're gonna do is upload our training data to the TwinLab cloud. Then we're gonna train our Gaussian process on that data, specifying our input dimensions and our outputs, the thing we want to know, the confinement time. We wait a few seconds and Boom, we have a trained Gaussian process model that with certain inputs can predict the performance of a fusion machine. 
So for this trained machine learning Gaussian process model, we can plot the predictions from that model for our jet test data against what the actual confinement times are. Again, a straight diagonal line through this plot means perfect agreement. And plotting the data, we can see that the Gaussian process emulator that we've trained is pretty good at predicting fusion performance. But here's an amazing benefit of using a Gaussian process over other machine learning models. If we want to predict data in an unseen regime, for example, the Gaussian process can tell us how uncertain we are. It doesn't just output what the confinement time should be, it will output an uncertainty as to how confident the prediction is. Now, this is important because right now in Fusion, we're building a lot of these next generation reactor-like devices that are gonna be a lot bigger, have stronger magnetic fields, have more power inputted and outputted. And so we're stepping into this increasingly unknown regime. As we press into the unknown, building fusion machines that look very different from the ones we have today, quantifying that uncertainty is going to be paramount. So congrats. We've successfully used multiple different methods to predict fusion confinement times or performance of tokamaks. This is a vital capability that will help influence the design of future fusion power plants. And even these relatively simple tools we've used can have incredibly powerful consequences. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fusion and Machine Learning, looking into how we can predict performance of magnetically confined fusion plasmas. Don't forget to stay subscribed for all things machine learning. And of course, all of the resources used for this video are in the description and on the Digilab website. In the next episode, we're gonna be looking at using advanced machine learning methods to help the development of laser fusion. I'll see you then.